Cabin Fever Crochet with me, Helene. I hope you are having a most wonderful day. Well, I'm back. Yay, it's been a long time in coming. I'm so happy to be here and bring to you the Sundowner Wireless Brimmed Sun Hat. That's right, no wire, no stabilizer needed to keep its shape and the way we will be constructing this hat. I do have a written pattern. It is up in my Etsy shop. Link for that is below in the description section. It's as detailed, all the usual tips, techniques, information separated out for you. And I have photos to show you exactly where your placement is for a special stitch we'll be doing in the body of the hat. And I also include the standard and metric conversions for that and is written in US terms. The hat is in three sizes and each size does fit a range and then I will go over step by step as we go along with the easy changes for each and how you can customize within that. So I have a toddler child size hat and we have a lady small which also accommodates a larger youth up to a teen and then the ladies average to extra large. And there are also three ways to wear it. Well, technically four, but um, you can wear it rolled such as I have here and, and how I was modeling it. You can wear it all the way flattened out, all the way around if you like for a little more lateral coverage, or you can just have the front flattened and the sides rolled up a little, which is actually my favorite way. So I get a little more shade coming down on my face to cover my schnoz there, <laughs> my well-endowed schnozola. And, um, and, and on an actual like, normal head size, which the, these forms are not, you'll be able to fit and shape it better, but it really, really does stay. Or yet another way is you can unroll it, and then I just would take my hand, just kind of gently make a curve. You have a bit of a garden type of hat. So if you like to garden, and then you really get a lot more full coverage over your ears too, but yet you still are able to see it's not too terribly oversized, but you can wear it to either the top crown portion is raised and it gives more of a curved look or what I do, and this is how I wore it the other day, is I just, when it's on my head, I just tap, tap a little bit and it'll flatten the top portion down and it'll give a little bit more of a um, squared shape like that, there we go. And it's much easier to do and it will hold its shape and form when it's actually on your head. So it's quite, quite versatile. And it's easy, easily adjustable with optional ribbon or cords as a cinch tie. So if you wind up making a little bit larger hat, you can cinch it closed, which is great for if the wind picks up and also for child size to help keep that on. I'm going to show you a way that you can bring it through the inside as well to create a little tie around their little chin. And so lots of options for that and I'll go over everything step by step and show you what we do as we go along. And um, so that serves, yes, as both decorative and functional, which is really nice. And I do have a more in-depth standalone video on just creating a self cinch tie for hats. If you would like to watch that separately and, and everything mentioned and related will, as always, be in the links in the description box below. And then I show you how you can add beads to the cord too. And um, so this, is a confident beginner friendly tutorial. If you have a good grasp on the basic stitches, I do take you through everything step by step with lots of tips and a few fun little techniques that I, things that I, I do to create where I need it to be. It's uh, oftentimes unconventional, but whatever works, that's kind of my motto. <laughs> and this tutorial, 
will be in two parts, part two, coming as soon as I'm able. Some of you may know that I had an injury, so I'm being very careful to not overdo. Um, but now that I've graduated to my recliner chair, I created a setup, so I'm able to film in that little at a time. It's just taking a little bit longer to get it all done, so I wanted to give you something so you could get started right away. And uh, I, oh, and I, I'm letting you know this because I just I don't normally film that way, but it's coming out pretty decent in my opinion, and you you're able to really see what I'm doing. So first. Let's go over the various types of yarn that work best for this type of hat. It's important for you to take a look at that so that way your hat will come out really nice for you also. And then just a few basic supplies and we'll get started. Oh, and the amount of yarn total is approximately four to four and a half ounces, 113 to 128 grams, and that covers all sizes. Okay, well, I think I covered everything I wanted to. And then now let's go ahead and get started. We are going to be working with two strands of yarn together. Gauge is important to get the right shape, fit, and structure within the framework I have from the multiple sizes. So either a medium weight number four paired with a number two fine or a number one super fine, depending on how thick that number four weight is. If it is on the lighter side, then you could go with the number two. Okay, if it's a little bit on the thicker side, then go with the number one. Or two strands of a light number three. And also, try to get a yarn that is more tightly wound and that's a little bit denser and a cotton or cotton blend and something that has some texture and bite to it that's going to give it the body it needs to hold the shape as well so for example the hat that i was wearing this one i combined with two strands of cascades sarasota yarn it's a 60 percent cotton 40 acrylic and it reminds me it's rather similar in its construction and the density as with the Caron Cotton Cakes, but a lighter version. This is a number three. This is a medium weight on the lighter side, number four, but two strands of this yarn is way too thick. It's going to be too hot, too heavy for summer months. I've tried it, already tested that out. And the same for, say, you know, when you, you're going with the number three, take the type of yarn and how it's wound into consideration. For example, Lion Brand Comfy Cotton. It's a number three, but it's on the thicker end. So two strands of that, again, it was just way too much and, and it did not hold its shape. If you take one strand of that with, say, it may be a number two weight, that might work, but it does tend to be a little bit fuzzy and you don't have as much separation with the strands and it's not going to allow the air to circulate as much also. So you can play around with different combinations and as our work grows starting from round two I'm going to give you measurements in both standard and metric so you know that exactly within the range that you need to be. Okay so some of the yarns like I already told you with this one I really like it it's comfortable but it is getting a little on the thick side. This one worked out great. I made this one in a lady small and I used the Yarn Bee Hobby Lobby Sugar Wheel Cotton. It's 100% cotton. It's very soft like a, a combed type, type cotton. It does have a lot of drape to it and it's very similar to Universal Cotton Supreme and this is in a light number three and on its own, and with two strands of this combined, it was way too soft and floppy. However, I combined it with the Lion Brand Cotton Fetty Yarn. It has enough bite and body to it. It works great for hats. So I combined these two yarns, and this is a very light number three, and you can really see the difference here. Hopefully you can in, in the strands how much thinner the cotton fetti is in comparison. So you can just go with one color all the way throughout if you like, 
or you can change it up like I'm going to do for what I will be demonstrating today so you can see how I change up my colors for the band portion. And in this toddler child sized hat I use two strands of the Bernat Softy S-O-F-T-E-E -E, baby cotton yarn which also worked out real well. And when you're working the band, you don't necessarily have to work with the exact same yarn. As long as they are similar in thickness, it will work out just fine. So you can play around and have fun. And switching up the band is a really nice way to use up little scrap balls of yarn too. And now for supplies, supplies. You will need a measuring tape to keep track of your gauge <clears throat> as we go along a row counter or something to write with. Especially when we get to the brim, you will need to keep track of that as well as one stitch marker, also very important for the brim. One to two hook sizes depending on the type of hat that you are making. The size hat, rather. So the ladies average to extra large. We will start with a J6 millimeter hook and then when we get to the band and for the rest of the hat, we'll drop down one size to an I 5.5 millimeter. If you are the working, the ladies small, if you're a very petite person, or for a teen or larger size youth, then you will start with the I 5.5 millimeter and stay with that throughout. And for the toddler child size, begin with the six millimeter J hook for the cap portion and the band, then go down to the eye 5.5 millimeter for the brim only. And if the cap winds up being a little too loose for your toddler or small child now, that's where the cinch tie really comes in useful. You can close that up, snug it down a little bit, and then you'll have a hat that still fits them in a year or two as they grow. And now the tutorial begins. I am going to be making the ladies average to extra large in the two strands I'm working with. One in that Bernat Softy Baby Cotton yarn to the right, and the strand on the left is the Lion Brand Cotton Fetty yarn. Again, both are number three lights. So I'm going with the six millimeter J hook. We're going to work nine double crochet in a magic circle. If you are not entirely familiar or comfortable with that, I'm going to show you how I do mine. Tail end facing me, draped across my palm with the working yarn attached to the ball behind me. I'm going to take that working yarn, wrap it around my two fingers to form an X, insert my hook underneath the two strands of my tail end that we dropped, just crossed over, and grab the working yarn, pull it up and through, and then every one, chain one to lock that in, cinch that down snugly. We're going to be working nine double crochets, so two ways you can do that. You can either chain two more for your chain three that counts as a first double crochet here and throughout. However, if you prefer a fuller stitch and a much, much less visible seam for the five to six rounds of our crown portion, then work the alternate double crochet along with me. And I modified one of my favorite methods yet again and came up with another version of that which I find works really well for this hat. Alright, so we're going to first just work one single crochet and then into the left front loop insert your hook, make sure you are going through both strands of your yarn and make one more single crochet. And that's just a regular alternate double crochet method and will work my modified version beginning with the next round. And then everyone go ahead and work eight double crochet in the ring for a total of nine, counting your beginning chain three or your alternate double crochet. Okay, I have completed my nine 
I recommend double checking your count and if you worked the alternate make sure you're counting from the top of your first stitch and not accidentally counting over to the right which belongs to your single crochet that built up that alternate stitch. Okay, and then I'm going to gently close the ring but not over tighten because I want to avoid over tightening my stitches within that first round. So now if you are working the chain three then go ahead and slip stitch to the top of your chain three in the usual way chain up your three as your first double or for the alternate drop the loop on my hook a little bit remove the hook go to the top of my alternate insert my hook from back to front okay and then the strands that slip up and down I'm going to rotate them just roll them a little bit so the slip portion goes to the back of my hook that way when I pull the yarn the strands through they actually wind up in the front of my hook in the position where they need to be and it's a little bit tight and a little bit tricky on this very first stitch especially in this position that I am in there we go okay. and it does get easier with each round okay and then I'm going to go back into that very first stitch and work my first single crochet and then into the left front loop through both strands my second single crochet for my alternate alright and now all we do is everyone just place another double crochet into that very first stitch and then two double crochets in each stitch all the way around for a total of 18 double crochets counting your first chain three or your alternate and then at the end of round excuse me, two, <laughs> round two, we will do a measurement. I'm back at the end of round two of our crown and I find it a little bit easier to go ahead and slip stitch before I measure. So I'm going to do the alternate. If you're working your chain three, go ahead and do that in the regular way okay see that was much easier that time around all right so make sure you have a nice flat surface and at the end of round two you should be at two and a half inches or 6.5 centimeters and just keep in mind that the ladies small, which also works for a larger youth up to a teen, will always be a little more narrow than the ladies average to extra large that I'm working by about one quarter inch or one half centimeter. Right now, for round three, this sequence, we're going to place two double crochets in the first counting our chain three or alternate. So again for the alternate, insert your hook into this very first same stitch you just slip stitched into. Work your single crochet and again into the front left loop another single crochet. And then everyone, one more double crochet into the same stitch and then one double crochet into the next. All right, you will repeat two double crochets into the next, one double crochet into the next, and that is your repeat for round three. 
two double crochets in the next followed by one two one two one all the way around and at the end of round three you will have 27 double crochets and we will measure again you may notice at the end of round three that your work is starting to curl a little bit and that is perfectly fine and normal for this particular project go ahead before you measure flatten the work out you can go ahead and slip stitch to join to the top of either your chain three or your alternate double crochet with whichever method you prefer okay and then let's do another measurement oh at the end of round three 27 double crochets hope you are double checking your work a bit on that and you should be at now three and a half inches or nine centimeters okay now moving on to round four the sequence on this round is two in the first one in each of the next two so again working back into that little bit tight stitch there with either your your chain three or your alternate and then one double crochet in the very first same stitch and there's your two double crochets followed by one double crochet in each of the next two two double crochets into the next stitch one double crochet in each of the next two that is your repeat sequence two double crochets in the next one double crochet in the each of the next two two double crochet one one two one one all the way around at the end of round four you will have 36 double crochets and i will see you back around we are now at the end of round four you should have 36 double crochets go ahead and slip stitch with your preferred method flatten out your work let's do another measurement and when I measure I take my first end marker and I place it just right in the center in between my front and back loop of the outer stitches on both sides so your work should now diameter should now measure approximately four and three quarter inches or 12 centimeters and for this round for those who are making the toddler child size this is going to be your last increase round for the crown then you stop here everyone else we will work one more increase round round six and then we will all carry on the next step working the cross stitch rounds and there is one little change up here very simple for the toddler child size when you get around to the end and I will tell you that in just a sec just for that hat only all right everyone now we're going to begin as we have been with one alternate double crochet in the first stitch or your chain three and then again as we have work another double crochet in the same stitch and now one double crochet in each of the next three there's two and three and now your repeat sequence will be two double crochets in the next one double crochet in each of the next three there's two three okay so you will have two double crochets in the next one in each of the next three two one two three two one two three all the way around with the exception of the child toddler size hat you will need to add one 
extra double crochet in the very last stitch. So everyone else, you will have 45 double crochets at the end of this round. The toddler child size will have 46 double crochets because we'll need an even number as we go forward and because the ladies sizes we work one more round which will get us to that point with the very last increase. Okay, and I will see you back around at the end of round five now. And again, the ladies sizes, which also is mentioned, will work into the larger youth up to a teen. You will have 45 double crochets. The toddler child size only, you will now have 46. And this is where you stop. And the child size, you skip round six, and then you will join back again thereafter from that point forward. <clears throat> and so now for working the ladies' sizes, we will do our final increase round, round six, and then, then we will all begin the cross stitch pattern to finish the rest of our cap portion, and then we will move on to the band. Okay, and again, as usual, into that very first stitch. Did I even measure? Oh my gosh! Elaine, 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 think. At the end of round five now, the lady sizes, 45 double crochets, the toddler child, 46 double crochets. And the diameter should be approximately five and three quarters to six inches or 14 and a half to 15 centimeters. And of course the lady small is always going to be a little more narrow than that. Okay. Now We are going to carry on to round six, the final increase round for the ladies' sizes, as we have been. Work your chain three as your first double or your alternate double crochet. One more double crochet into that very same first stitch, and now we will place one double crochet in each of the next four. Your repeat sequence, two double crochets in the next, and one double crochet in each of the next four. And you will place two double crochets in the next, one in each of the next four, two in the next, one, two, three, four, two, one, two, three, four, all the way around. And at the end of round six, you will have 54 double crochets. Okay, I will see you back around in just a minute. And here we are at the end of round six. You should have 54 double crochets and your diameter should be approximately seven to about seven and an eighth inches or 18 to 18 and one quarter centimeters. Now we begin for everyone, all sizes, the cross stitch pattern. We will be working a total of four rounds of this pattern. However, except if you are a lady's small size and very petite head, you might want to try your hat on the cap at the end of the third round. It should fit everyone about an inch or so 
which is about what, two and a half centimeters above your hairline, above the top of your ears. And because everyone's head size, hairlines, so forth, different shapes and sizes, it's just a gauge for you. We're going to be adding in the band, which will equal the difference and meet up to the top of your forehead, which ideally that's about where your hat should hit. That way it's not sliding down your face and you have all this material on your head in the middle of the summer and the warmer months. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, I think for the toddler child size, four rounds would still be good, but you can add or take away one round of the cross stitch round for all sizes to customize to the wearer to their head size and shape. All right, so let's begin. Now, if you want to, whichever method you've been using when you begin the first stitch, you can go ahead and just slip stitch the regular way and then chain three because on the cross stitch pattern, because we will be crossing over that first stitch, with another double crochet, it really doesn't show up as much and you will have no visible line anyway because the way this pattern is done, the cross stitch creates a diagonal effect and it really blends in, but because I still want a full size stitch as much as possible and to be consistent, I'm going to continue with the way I have been doing. So now for the lady sizes, we will then be on round seven of our cap portion. Child size, toddler size is round six, okay? We're going to begin in the same way, so either your chain three or your alternate in the first stitch. And now we are going to create another double crochet and cross over the double crochet we just made and we are going to work in the first stitch to the right which is the last stitch of the previous round. That's where, where we're going to make our double crochet. All right, so yarn over, cross over in front and double crochet into that first stitch to the right and bring your loops up nice and tall to the height of a double crochet to keep it from getting squashed down because it takes up a little extra space when crossing over similar to making a post stitch. So now we're going to skip the next unworked stitch and this is where you want to be careful of your placement going around especially on this first round not to work into a stitch that's already spoken for because then you'll be doubling up and creating an increase. And here we are going to maintain now the stitch count we had in our last round. So for those working the toddler size, you will maintain 46 stitches. Ladies adult sizes, 54 double crochets. Okay, so skipping the next unworked stitch, and you can look to see here where the double crochet is connected that is underneath the cross stitch. So you skip the next unworked, double crochet into the next. Then you're going to cross back over in front. You do your yarn over just like your normal double crochet, and double crochet into that skipped stitch and that is your repeat all the way around. Skip the next unworked stitch. This one is accounted for. We just worked into these two stitches. This is your next unworked. Skip that. Double crochet into the next. Yarn over. Cross over in front of the double crochet just made double crochet into your skip st stitch. Okay. Skip the next unworked stitch, double crochet into the next. 
double crochet across in front into the skipped stitch. Repeat this sequence all the way around. I will meet you your last two stitches. This is the first stitch, which was the last in this round, right? Belongs to your cross stitch, all right? So I will meet you here the last two stitches, show you how to reconnect and carry on from there. And here we go at the end of round seven, our first cross stitch round, round six for the toddler child size. Okay, two stitches left. It can appear that you have more because the cross stitches do tend to slant, offset a little bit, but you can see at the base where the double crochet behind the cross stitch is connected to the stitch to the left. And as mentioned at the beginning, we worked in the first stitch to the right, the last stitch of this round. So that's already accounted for, which leaves us the next two as our last two. Okay. So I'm going to zoom back in, but I just wanted to show you how mine is looking so far. It's creating right now an inverted bowl shape, but you can turn that to where the curve is on the outside now if you like. Give you an idea. Okay, and it should fit on your head a little bit loosely because it's not a beanie. It's not intended to fit flush and flat on your head like a beanie. And when we get to the band portion, that will cinch it in a little bit. And that way it creates this shape so you have, you know, a sun hat shape. And that way it gives you a bit of a raised section, just a little bit, between your hat and the top of your head so you get really good airflow and circulation through there. All right, so let's complete the last two stitches together and then we will connect. I'll show you how to do that, which will be the same for the cross stitch. Okay, here we go. Skipping the next unworked stitch, double crocheting into the next crossing back over in front and working into the skipped stitch, completing round seven or six. And now we are going to connect to the very first, either alternate double crochet or chain three. And the first one does get squished down in there a little bit, so you want to pull that up and make sure you are working into the top of the first stitch and not accidentally into the second stitch, the one we crossed over with, because that will create a decrease. So either, either way you're going to join like you have been. Okay. And then we'll begin the same with either a chain three in that very first stitch and it does get a little bit smaller. So just work into that. And always make sure you are pulling up and working through the two strands. Don't accidentally drop one or you will have a drop looped somewhere in here that is not connected to the rest of your work. Okay, now we are going to do, as we did before, cross back over in front of the double crochet just made and begin by double crocheting into the very first stitch to the right, the last stitch of the previous round. And now each following cross stitch row is going to be much easier to see the placement of your stitches because as you can see they are more separated than the double crochets but still just keep an eye out for your placement make sure you are not doubling up okay so cross stitch into that first 
double crochet to your right. And now we are going to skip the next unworked double crochet and double crochet into the next. Crossing back over in front and double crocheting into that skipped stitch. And that is our repeat all the way around. Again, maintaining your last stitch count of 54 or 46. And just to give you a little visual tip here, when you skip the next, that is always going to be the left double crochet of your set of two cross stitches. Skip the left stitch and you will always then, now you're going to work into the next, which is the stitch on the right of your next set of two. Okay. And then you cross over and work back into that skipped stitch. One more time, skip your next unworked stitch, which is a stitch on the left of this set of two. Double crochet into the next, the stitch on the right. So that way you have a visual placement of where your stitches are supposed to land so you know you are in the right place. Skip the next unworked double crochet, double crochet into the next, cross back over and double crochet into that skipped stitch. Repeat all the way around. Reconnect in the same way we just did here. Slip stitch into the top of your chain three or alternate making sure you are working into the first stitch. Cross back over and into the first unworked stitch on the right. Do not accidentally work in to this last stitch that's already spoken for with the cross stitch. You can see, follow the line right down to where it connects. Then you continue on with the sequence, working back on the left side as usual, skipping the next unworked stitch double crocheting into the next, crossing back over, double crocheting into the skipped stitch for a total of four cross stitch rounds unless you need to only do three rounds to better fit the height of your head. And here we are at the end of the fourth round of our cross stitch pattern, which is a total round 10 for the ladies sizes, round 9 for the toddler child size. And I think it's a good place to close for part 1. Then I'll be back as soon as I'm able. We'll pick up where we left off, continue with the band, which will bring the hat down to where it should sit on your head. We'll do some more measurements. I'll explain a little bit more about that when we come back and then finish up with the brim and a couple of simple easy ways to work that self cinch tie. And if you want to change colors like I did for your band and would like to go ahead and choose those now, put it together with the hat you've done so far, feel free to do that. Okay then, take good care my fiber friends and I will see you soon. Bye for now.